presents Academy Awards. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses. Techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And now, E.R. Squibb and Sons, manufacturing chemists to the medical profession since 1858, brings you the distinguished star, Mr. Frederick March, who has three times been nominated as Best Actor of the Year and in 1931 won the Academy Award. You will hear Mr. March in one of the most famous of all Academy Award winning pictures, that great drama of Hollywood, A Star is Born, which as Best Original Story won the 1937 Academy Award. <laughs> High heels, low heels, clicking across the lobby of my little Hollywood hotel. High heels, low heels that have come from all over America to win a place in the movies. Anything for me, Pop? Anything for Esther Blodgett? Oh, yes, Blodgett. Well, let me see. Nope, nothing. How was the luck today? There wasn't any. Maybe you don't go at it right. Now you take Danny McGuire here. He knows the ropes, don't you, Danny? Sure, had him around my neck for years. Miss Blodgett, Mr. McGuire. Mr. McGuire works in pictures when he works. How are you? Oh, I, I'm not working at all. I'm just beginning to think I'll never get a job. I guess I'm beginning to get a little scared. Uh-oh. Well, there's only one thing to do for that feeling when you're tired and sunk and down to your last nickel. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Feel better, Esther? Yes, Danny. And when I sign my contract, the first thing I'm going to do is to see that you direct every picture I'm in. And another thing I'll insist on is that Norman Maine plays my leading man. Had a girl. Hey, how did he get in here? Oh, he's been my ideal for ages. Yeah? Uh, look, Esther, since you won't go back home and you're bent to stick here in Hollywood, you gotta eat. Right. And to eat, you gotta work. Right. So, uh, well, believe it or not, I, uh, I got a job for you. Danny! Oh, that's wonderful! When do I go to the studio? Uh, <clears throat> well, you, you, you don't exactly, uh, go to a studio. It's, uh, it's to be a waitress. You, you see, it's a kind of a movie job, in a way. You said it was to be a waitress. Yeah, but it's waitressing for Casey Burke, the big director over at our studio. He's throwing a party tomorrow night to celebrate on account of finishing the picture, and he told me to get him an extra waitress. Oh, a lot of people will see you, honey, and... and it's five bucks. Hello, Oliver. Do you want to fire me now? Wait to see the picture. I'm not a director anymore. I'm a male nurse. <laughs> oh, Burke, what's the matter with the picture? A guy named Norman Maine. His work is beginning to interfere with his drinking. Uh, you do all right with Norman. Yeah, I'm told I make some marvelous bromo seltzer. Excuse me. <laughs> Oliver, darling, Mr. Libby from your publicity department is here. Something about Mr. Maine. Oh, oh, yes. Probably some little thing. Uh, yes, Libby. Your star, Norman Maine, was apprehended driving an ambulance down Wilshire Boulevard with the siren going full blast. Oh, no. He explained he was a tree surgeon on his way to a maternity Yeah, case. well, will it, uh, will it be in the papers? No, no, it won't be in the papers. No. But it's a nice, expensive hobby of yours, keeping Mr. Maine's informal entertainments out of the public press. Oh, my goodness. Is he, is he no, in the... No, no, he's not in the pokey. He's out on bail in that Duesenberg Roadster of his, probably aiming in the general direction of this party. <laughs> Norman. 
Norman, I've made a lot of money with you. I can stand a loss or two, but I hate to see you go the way of so many others. Well, uh, Oliver, why don't you get Lloyds to insure you against me? You can't get insurance against a man forgetting who he is. You're a great star, Norman. But there's nobody so big he can afford to have people refuse to work with him. Oh, who doesn't want to work with me? I, I know plenty of people who do. Yeah, so do I, Norman. But your real friends can't stand seeing you fall apart. What do you mean by that? Oh, the first signs were always the same, Norman. Not being able to remember your lines. The cameraman struggling to cover up your hangovers. All because you've got to have a good time every day, every night. I, I've warned you for a long time, Norman. A drink, Mr. Maine? Say, who, who cast this party? Who's the, who's the beautiful waitress? Uh, hey, where are you going, beautiful? Oh, I give up. Oh. <laughs> ah, this is very good. Did you make it with your two little hands? No, I didn't. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to stack plates in the dining room. Oh, no, no, don't go away. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I must help serve the buffet, Mr. Maine. Well, of course we must. <laughs> How careless of me to forget. You've got very pretty hair. Please, Mr. Maine. You'd better not stay here. And a sensitive mouth and a charm. Come on, come on. This is no place for you. we got to get out of here. I can't. I've got to stay. My dear, you're, you're much too pretty to be a waitress, and I'm much too bored to be a guest. I'll bet I know what you're going to say now. What? Good night. Good night, and thanks. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Do you realize that all I've found out about you is that you're foolish enough to want to go into pictures? Why is it foolish? Look at you. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> now, uh, I'd, uh, I'd like to go into this matter rather thoroughly. Oh, that's awfully nice so, of uh, you. So why don't we go on up to my place and talk it over? Oh, no, thank you very much, but I really must say good night. You're not angry? I'm uh, hungry. Why don't you go get something to eat? Oh, I see. Well, uh, good night, Miss Blodgett. Good night, Mr. May. Oh, wait a minute. The least I can do is see you to the door. Will I see you again? I hope so. Has anyone ever told you that you're lovely? Well. Well, now you know. Thank you. This, uh, this is hard to say, but I, I want to say it anyway. On the screen, I'm a, well, you know, in private life, I'm a, you know, you, you know. But whatever I do, I still respect lovely things. And you're lovely. Do you understand? I understand. And it's, it's not that whiskey I've been drinking that's talking, either. I'm glad. Good night. Good night. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Yes? Do you mind if I take just one more look? <laughs> Thank you. Hello? What is it? Who? Norman? Oh, what have you done now? Oh, oh yes, I see. Oh, yes. So it's that again, huh? Oh, sure. She, she's beautiful. Sure, I know. You want me to give her a screen test? Huh? Yes. Certainly she has wonderful possibilities. You know she's got something. You know all the others had something, too. I'll tell you, Oliver, she, she has that sincerity and honestness that, I, I mean, that, that, that sincerity and, and, and honestness that, that makes a great actress. I'm so sure of this girl, I want to do the test with her myself. I, I'm determined to save you from making a terrible mistake, from, from letting another studio snap her up. Now, you've worked hard, Oliver, and you're entitled to a break. You, you'll give her a test? Swell. Swell, Oliver. I'll call her up myself. In just a moment, you will hear the second part of Academy Award. Now that warm summer days are here again, you'll find Squib Dental Cream more refreshing than ever. You'll like its frosted flavor, cool with the tang of dewy, fresh mint. 
You like the brisk, invigorating action of Squib Dental Cream. It leaves your teeth and gums feeling so clean, your whole mouth so pleasantly wide awake. You can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. For Squib Dental Cream, one of the great family of Squib products, helps to uncover all the natural sparkle of your smile. That's because the polishing agent in this quality dentifrice is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science. So begin now to brush your teeth with the dental cream that's three ways refreshing. Brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Before continuing with The Star is Born, we wish to thank David O. Selznick Productions for making this story available. David O. Selznick Productions are also producers of Duel in the Sun. Beginning next week, July 3rd, Academy Award will be heard over these same stations at a new time, Wednesday evening at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. And now the House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Frederick March in A Star is Born. Joe Slate it. Screen test number 12, 432. S.W. Lodger, director Seaberg, cameraman Haley. Hey, wait a minute. Move that gobo in. Uh, put a silk on the broad. No, not a Yankee one. Uh, that's the one. Is this light too hot, Haley? Okay, but cut down on your backlight. Put a double on that mighty. I think she's going to do swell, don't you, Mr. Burke? If I could tell that, Denny, the studios wouldn't have to make tests, and I'd get a million dollars a year. Uh... Yes, Mr. Burke. Listen, gentlemen, this is just a test. Have you forgotten by any chances a football game this afternoon? Ready now, Mr. Burke. All ready, Mr. Burke. Okay, Mr. Burke. Uh, we can go now, Mr. Burke. Ready. Ready. All set. All uh, set. We're ready, Mr. Burke. All right, let's take it. Ready, Norman? Ready. Ready, Miss, uh, what's your name? Oh, you'll soon know your name, Esther. The whole world's going to know it. But I'm so scared. They better not try it today. Now, don't be silly, honey. They, they all had to go through this. Bergman, Betty Davis, Myrna Loy, and now Esther Blodgett. All right, I'm ready. Quiet. Quiet is the tape. Roll them. Ah. Speed. All right, Miss Blodgett. I may as well tell you that my whole organization thinks I've gone nuts to sign you. But, uh, well, maybe they're right. I've been nuts before. I hope you're not wrong. <laughs> well, we won't know for a while. Worst of it is, Norman Maine saw the screen test, and now he wants you for his leading lady in his new picture. Oh. Yeah, matter of fact, he insists on it. I could have said no in words of one syllable, but I've got a hunch about you. Oh. Yes, I think the public's going to go for you. That's all that matters, even if you can't act. Oh. <laughs> well, by the way, what is your name, anyway? My name? Oh, oh, my name is Esther Blodgett. No good heavens, no. Not that. Why, is there something wrong with it? Well, it's all right for Esther Blodgett, housewife. But it's no good for a star. Now, let me see. You've got to have a name that looks well in the papers and on a marquee. Eh, I used to know a girl called Vicky. <laughs> yes, I like the name Vicky. <clears throat> well, now for a last name. Jones, Smith, Mafuski, Edo. Excuse me, Mr. Niles. There's a Mr. Lester on the phone. Who? Mr. Lester. That's it. That's it, Lester. Vicky Lester. Great. This is Billy Moon from Hollywood. Exclusive. Oliver Niles has done it again. Discovered a new Cinderella, a starlet from the Rockies. Her name is Vicky Lester. And she'll soon have all Hollywood agog when a new picture with Norman Maine is shown in your hometown. Vicky, are you, are you kidding? Is this really your first prize fight? Yes, Norman. It's so exciting. Get him, Gasha. Shoot your right. Watch Gasha get him. Can't you hear me, Gasha? Shoot your right. Look, look, he's got it. Yes, didn't he? So you like it, huh? Aha. Uh -huh. You like me? Oh, sure I do. You were always my idol. Even way back when uh -uh, I was a little... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. By the way, will you marry me? No, thank you. Come on. Come on, Gasha. Get 
Lisa, finish it. Why won't you marry me? Because you're not dependable. Shoot that right. And you throw your money away. Hey, referee, break him off. Break him off. And, and you drink too much. Well, suppose I quit drinking. Yes? Give him that right, Garcia. Let him have it. And suppose I became absolutely dependable on all occasions. Gee, that was a beautiful right. What a fight. Norman. What the what? Would, huh? would you do all that for me? Huh? If I said I'd marry you? Oh, no, no. I, I was just kidding. I, I can't believe it. But it's true, Mrs. Maine. It's true. That's your new house. This is your new grass. Those are other trees. And here's your new husband. Oh, no. Yeah. Carry me across the threshold. Sure. Mm. You mind if I kiss you again? Oh, Norman, I'm so happy. I'm so lucky. It'll always be like this, won't it, Norman? Sure, darling. If you like me as a bridegroom, just, just wait till you know me as a husband. I can't <laughs> wait. And I thought we were going to live at the beach house. Oh, well, we'll still keep the house at the beach. But this is special. I mean, this is our castle that used to be in the air. Hmm? Where we'll never use ugly words like contracts and pictures and careers. When we come in those gates, we'll check the studio outside. Uh-oh. I'll take it, darling. Yes. No, no, Miss Lester isn't at home yet. No, I'm not the butler. But I can take a message just as well as he can. Honest. Oh. Oh, yes, the Academy dinner. Oh, I'll, I'll let you know. Oh, hold on a minute. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Norman Maine has just come in. Would you uh, like to talk with him about the dinner? Oh. Oh, I see. You, you wouldn't. Yes. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll tell Miss Lester when she comes in. Norman. Oh, please, no. Oh, forget it, darling. It, I just didn't realize. You see, sweet, a new star is born. Let's, uh, let's go look at the swimming pool. Hello, Oliver. Well, hello, Norman. I, uh... I'm over here to ask a question of you as a friend, Oliver. Well, sure. Sure, go ahead. Shoot. Oliver, do you... Do you think I'm slipping? Well, Norman, I... Uh... Can you take it? Go ahead. Well, the tense is wrong, Norman. You're not slipping. You've slipped. Well, he might... My fan mail is still big. Oh, Norman, we're not through yet, you know, either of us. Uh, I, I, I've got a swell script lined up for yeah, you. Yeah, but about Esther, I mean, if you, if you think I'm going to get on her Well, way... as a matter of fact, it just, just so happens. There's a, there isn't anything for her in this picture. I'd more or less plan to star her in a picture of her own. Maybe with that young Pemberton. He's, he's coming along, you know, very nicely. Good for young Pemberton. All right, Oliver. We'll make a try at it. Let's let's hope it's not too late. Yeah. Let's hope it's not too late. There you are, darling. What's new today? Oh, nothing. I, I haven't been out of the house. Let's go somewhere tonight. No, no, you're tired. We... You've been to the studio all day. We'll stay in. Oh, hmm? I'm not tired, really. Oh, yes, you are. You've got a hard day ahead of you. Anyway, I, I see so little of you, I'd, I'd rather have you to myself. But it's a servant's night out, Norman. Uh, no uh, uh, I'm learning to cook in my spare time. Then I'll think of marrying you. <laughs> I get it. You want to make an honest cook out of me, huh? Look, I'm about to unveil a kingly repast. Well, how's it look? Wonderful. Hmm? I agree. Now, don't be formal, darling. Just, just pitch in, even if the sandwiches do look a little large. <laughs> I guess my mouth isn't quite big enough. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> Next time, I'd better measure it and make them to size. <laughs> They're a little hard to lift. 
<laughs> we, we could have some cold beer. Norman. Well, that is, you could have some. I'd, I'd watch. I haven't broken my promise, darling. I haven't had a drop of alcohol and well, since we've been married. Oh, my darling. I love you so. And it must run in the family. Because this teetotaling old wreck loves you with a great love. How about a little tiny kiss? That's what I wait for all day. Don't answer it, Norman. Maybe they'll go away. No, they never go away at a time like this. I'll be right back, honey. Vicky, you to live here? Package. I signed for it. Who are you? I'm her husband. Okay, sure. Sign right here, Mr. Lester. Mr. Mr. Lester? Oh, great. Mr. Maine, haven't seen you at the track in a long time. What'll it be? Same as usual? No, no, I've reformed, Sam. I'll have some ginger ale, please. Well, if it isn't Mr. America of yesteryear. Hello, hello, Libby. How's the press agent business? Aren't you away without your keeper? I heard you were tied to the reservation. Uh, I've been keeping pretty close to home, Libby. Uh, <laughs> it gets pretty dull, doesn't it? A lot of time to kill since you retired from the hurly-burly of the screen. Yeah, yeah, it, it gets dull. Esther's away a lot, you know. I wouldn't complain about that if I were you. It's nice somebody in the family's making a living. I go a little, a little slow, will you, Libby? I don't want to forget we're friends. Friends? Friends, my eye. Listen, I got you out of your jams because it was my job, not because I was your friend. I don't like you. I never did like you. Nothing made me happier than to see all those cute little pranks of yours catch up with you and land you on your celebrated face. That pretty work, Libby. Always wait until they're down. Then kick them. Say, listen, you fixed yourself nice and comfortable. You can live off your wife now. She'll buy the drinks and put up with you, even if nobody else... Hurry up! Okay, Mr. Maine. There. That's what I've been waiting for. Lie there on the floor, glamour puss, and take the count. Why, it's Norman Maine. He's drunk again. He's been drunk for years. Is he dead? Yeah, but don't tell him. I guess she's sorry. Why, he she can't even get up off the floor. Oh, yes, he can. Can I get you some ice for your eye, Mr. Maine? Yeah, plenty of ice, Sam. And a bottle of scotch. Is he sober yet? He's a sick man. He's been drunk for weeks. No. No, you're wrong, Oliver. Drunk for months, not weeks. He's sleeping now. Oh, no, he isn't, darling. He's listening to you. Vicky, do you still love him? Yes, Oliver, I do. I'm going to stay with him, and I'm going to try to help him. Vicky, I've got to tell you something. I don't want to hear it. I don't care what you have to say about my career. I'll, I'll give up pictures. I, I'm going away for good with Norman. But you can't do that. You're at the very peak of your success. You worked hard to achieve it while he... Oh, Norman is through, and he won't admit it. He's dragging you down with him. Oliver, what if he heard you say that? Oh, he's asleep, probably passed out. Oh, you've tried to defend Norman. You've said he helped you to make a career. I say nobody can help people to careers. You've made your own career. It's your life. I belong with my husband. It's your life you're giving up, Vicky. Maybe I can give Norman back his. Goodbye, Oliver. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Is it, is it evening, darling? It's evening, Norman. See, I, I must have slept like a log. Yes, you have been sleeping. You did? Yeah. You, you jittery, darling. Gosh, I, I'm just coming out of the jitters, and you're just going in. This is a swell household. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, honey, I, I feel like being an athlete this evening. I thought I'd take a dip in the ocean. Swim? This hmm? time of night? Oh, sure. I'm, I'm a reformed character. What I need is to build up my muscles. Take your socks off. Come on in with me. No, I mean, I freeze. I'm a sunbathe. Yeah, sure you are. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm 
I'm off to the briny deep. I'll have something warm for you to eat, darling. You're a priceless jewel. Good wife. Say, hold that for us. Why, silly? Hold it. You mind if I take just one more look? Why shouldn't the Pacific Ocean be cold, Mr. Maine? The Pacific should be nice and cold. Considering that it's about to be your grave, Mr. Maine. Yes. It's waiting out there for you, Mr. Maine. And it plays for keeps. What am I doing this for? Turn back, Mr. Maine. Turn back before it's too late. No, I'll give up pictures. I'm going away for good. What's Norman? You're at the very peak of your success. Norman is through and he won't admit it. He's dragging you down with him. Oh, no. Oh, no, he isn't. No, he isn't. Norman me going down alone. No! Oh, yes, you are, Mr. Maine. Down. Down. industry has come to the Chinese theater for this opening tonight. Come to pay tribute to a great star in what has been called her greatest performance. The girl who won the heart of Hollywood, Miss Vicki Lester. Yeah! Let, me, let me through, please. Please, please do. Thank you. Miss Lester, Miss Lester, please, a few words for the movie audience before we go on with this great occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Vicki Lester. Thank you. But tonight I'd rather speak to you as Mrs. Norman May. This very moment, every moment of the day and night, Someone sinks into deep, merciful sleep, avoiding the pain of surgery. For this escape, he may thank the man who first discovered ether, and all who have labored since then to improve its quality and effectiveness. Since 1858, one of the many squib contributions to the cause of human health has been the development of safe, pure anesthetics. Today, 85% of all ether used in American hospitals is produced by the House of Squibb. And from the Squibb Laboratories have come newer drugs that meet special requirements of modern surgery. Each the product of ceaseless research, which keeps the name Squibb in the forefront of medical progress. For it has been the goal of Squibb research for almost a century to supply you and your doctor with drugs of unfailing uniformity, purity, and efficacy. That is why, in home and hospital alike, Squibb is a name you can trust. <laughs> Another great picture, the House of Squibb will present Academy Awards starring Humphrey Bogart in the Maltese Falcon with Mary Astor and Sidney Greenstreet. However, beginning next week, Academy Award will be heard over these same stations at a new time every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. See your newspaper for local time. Frederick March is soon to be seen in the Samuel Goldwyn production, Best Years of Our Lives. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Awards presented by the House of Squibb 
on names you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.